Good morning and welcome once again to the Morning Meditation with God Radio Ministry brought to you each morning at this same time by the generous and uh, loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. We'd like to extend to you and to your entire family a warm and loving invitation to come and be with us in any and all of the services of the Midwest Church of Christ. Again, located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m., is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30, we have our Sunday Bible School. And at 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible in the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do that. One is the Bible correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come, sit down with you, study the Word of God, right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call, 774-3986, and uh, we'll register you uh, today. Praise be unto God. In other announcements, we um, want to encourage parents Bring your young people to church on Sunday so they can be in Sunday school and they can be in the children's church, four to 10 years of age. Make sure you come and participate. Uh, have your children participating, learning the, the 
worship uh, decorum and worship attitude and mindset. So let us uh, let us encourage you uh, to come and uh, bring your young people out to, to be a part of that. Um, praise be un, unto God. We want to also remind the ladies that the ladies Bible class will be in session this coming um, uh, Sunday, the 23rd. The youth ministry is um, having their um, uh, Friday night live. Amen. This Saturday, uh, we want you to, uh, this Friday rather, and we hope that you will join with them, having your young people out to be with other young Christian young people. And uh, I know they will be blessed. And uh, so let's keep them in our prayers. Uh, the Young Adult Social is set for Sunday, March the 1st. Join the group 18 to 39 for refreshments and real talk about our Christian journey. John, Brother John Poo Malone and his wife, Sister Lydia, they are making a, a real difference in the life of uh, young adults. Make sure you come and uh, be with them and let the Lord guide you and keep you because God is able. So you make sure that you come and be with the uh, young adult ministry on Sunday, March the 1st. Praise be unto God. Let's pray not forget our stewardship uh, packets uh, are due, and certainly we are looking forward to that. Uh, amen. Uh, turning in your census uh, information. So we can have that up to date, uh, amen. If you do not uh, receive an, an email or a text message from the church, it just means we don't have the information and we need you to help us get that information so you can keep in touch with other Christian information. The uh, Village Learning Center after school ministry is taking applications for our winter session. Make sure you sign them up. Uh, we can help your children. Our goal is to help them be prepared for their testing in 2020 in the spring. So it, it, to get them ready, they need to be in our after school ministry winter session the kids cafe is open on thursdays that means they will be open tonight at uh, 4 uh, p.m at 5 p.m rather and uh, we hope that you will come out and bring your young people and listen we need uh, volunteers parents come out volunteer uh, with these young people, that God may bless your life and theirs. If you're in need of food, you know someone in need of food and clothing, make sure you come. Make sure you come and uh, uh, amen. And and um, to our food pantry and clothes closet today um, at 3 p.m. Uh, we provide assistance on the second and fourth Thursdays. So make sure you come out today. Praise be unto God. The 
West Broadway uh, Church of Christ and area-wide news will be having their uh, 52nd annual uh, annual area-wide congregational singing. Oh, you are you are the common witness, the the blending of of the voices of the people of God. Oh, you don't want to miss this, and uh, it'll be this uh, Sunday at 2 p.m. there at the West Broadway Church of Christ. Praise be unto God. The The Southwestern Christian College I will be having their cor uh, choral concert here in the city on March the 12th at 7 p.m. The and it will be live at the Newburgh Church of Christ um, and uh, you 4700 Indian Trail. Keep that in mind. Praise be unto God. All right. I think that um, we'll, I've got all of that. Praise be unto God. The, let us remember our sick and, and shut in. Want to remember uh, Sister uh, Terry Clay, uh, Sister uh, Savannah Johnson, Sister Anya Lawson, Sister uh, uh, Deborah McGill, uh, Sister Don Marie Sizemore. Pray also for Angelo Pentegrast. And we want you to pray for a great, uh, uh, amen, a great volunteer. A great volunteer in our village learning sister, Sister Carol. She is in uh, rehab, and we pray that our God will bless her richly and uh, be able to uh, join back with us. Uh, amen. There, and our prayers are, are with them, uh, with her. We want to remember our shut-in. Want to remember Sister uh, Louise Covington, uh, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, Sister Pearl Smith, Sister Mary Wood, Brother James Fraser. Please keep the um, uh, Sister Bertha Fraser. It was so good to see her last night. Um, and, and, and we are praying that our God will bless her uh, richly. We want to pray also uh, for our sick, our, our, uh, those going through dialysis and radiation, chemotherapy, and other special treatments to the eyes and hands. So let's keep this them in prayer. Our dear friends, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler, Sister Rita Kamishi. Pray also for Sister Sarah, uh, the uh, daughter of Brother Clark and Sister Ellen Stannard. Pray also for Sister Beverly Bledsaw, Sister Anya Lawson, Sister Latanya Johnson, <clears throat> and pray for Brothers Jasper Crenshaw, Brother Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, Brother Frederick Hines, Brother Marvin Stevenson, Jr., and pray for Brother David Ellis. Want to pray for I continue to pray for Sister Miles and the family as they can uh, 
began to um, uh, uh, continue to allow God to comfort them and be with them. If we want to pray for Sister Annette uh, Tanner, uh, the wife of Brother uh, Brother Alfred Tanner, yesterday during the repast, uh, uh, Sister Tanner received a call uh, from her daughter there in California that her father died, and uh, uh, her heart is uh, breaking to be with her sister, with her daughter. And I pray to God that He will give her the comfort she needs in order to be of support to her daughter. Praise be unto God. We want to. Um, ask you now to let's go to God in prayer. Dear God and Father in heaven, as we come before you today, we're so mindful that you are God and there is none besides you. I come and bring our sick and shut in. Those going through dialysis, radiation, chemotherapy, I bring them before you. The Sister Carol, as she is going through her rehabilitation, we bring Sister Annette uh, Tanner and, and Brother Tanner as their daughter, uh, amen, is grieving the loss of her father. I pray for them. I'm glad you're God. You can, you're a God that can comfort the mother here and be with the daughter there and we are just so thankful for your great love and mercy father go with us as we open up your word today and may your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light in our pathway it's my prayer in the name of jesus amen Now, let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it's in his law that he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and, no, and whatsoever he goeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse number 3, 
The Bible, the word of God says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. They shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. They shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. They shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. Then they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for greatest your reward in heaven was so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. Now let's open our Bibles back again to the book of Matthew chapter five. This morning, we'll be reading from verse number 16. The word of the Lord says, in the same way, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Thursday, February the 20th, 2020 our daily devotion entitled you are light there is no mistaking the effect of light of light upon a dark place Light boldly and unbashedly announces its presence and vigorously dispels, vigorously dispels darkness. God's desire is to fill you with his light. He wants you to shine as a brilliant testimony of his presence and power in your life so that the darkness in the lives of those around you will be displaced by the light of God's glory. If, however, if, however, you notice the world around you becoming darker and darker, don't blame the darkness. It is simply doing what darkness does the only remedy for darkness 
is light. If the world is becoming dark, darker, the problem is not with the darkness. The problem is with the light. Jesus said his disciples should be the light of the world. Matthew 5, verse 14. What an awesome responsibility that God places upon us to be the ones to whom God would shine his divine light and dispel the darkness from around others and announcing his own his own coming jesus said the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light and upon those who sat in in regions and shadows of death light has dawned in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 16. There was no ignoring Jesus' arrival upon the earth. Darkness was dispelled everywhere Jesus went. God's truth was boldly proclaimed people were healed hypocrisy was exposed and sinners found forgiveness the world the world was never the same once the father introduced his light through his son. Can that be said of you as well? Do you, amen, uh, can, can your co-workers recognize the light that is within you? Does the presence of christ radiate from your amen from your home in your community when god's light is allowed to shine uh amen unhindered through your life darkness around you will be dispelled And so is the reason the readings of the scripture found in the book of Psalms, the first division, the book of Matthew chapter five, verse three through 12. And here in the book of Matthew chapter five and verse 16. Now let's Go to our featured study. We want to go to the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. This morning, beginning at verse number 20, the word of the Lord said, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come by faith jacob when he was uh, dying blessed each of the sons of joseph and he worshiped be leaning on the top of his staff by faith joseph as he was Amen. Nearing the end of his life, 
mention the exodus of the Israelites and gave instructions concerning his bones. Isaac is the prime example of a person who believes the promise of God but needs to repent before he can receive God's blessing. Isaac is an example of the person who believes in the things to come despite a man's sin. Isaac's faith was a faith that believed in the things to come despite sin. Isaiah and the book of Genesis the 27th chapter and verse 1 through 40 believed God would, would fulfill his promise through his sons. Fulfill his promise despite the selfishness. Uh, amen. And coming deception of his sons my brothers and sisters isaac was aged and blind when he was ready to pass the blessing on to his sons jacob was the younger son who who stuck a man closer to his mother. He was somewhat of a, a homebody. Esau was Isaac's older son, a true outdoorsman like Isaac. Therefore, Isaac preferred Esau. He wanted Esau to receive the greater blessing of God. As particular, he wanted Esau to be the seed to whom God would fulfill his promise of a promised land and of a, a man, a nation of people you may ask the question why did uh, isaac why did isaac sin how did he sin well first of all he and his wife rebecca they they put a division in their own. They, they, they made a difference, a love that is different. And, and for one child over the other child. My brothers and sisters, this, this ought to help parents today. Don't favor one child over another. Treat them all the same. And don't ever, don't ever find yourself showing favoritism to one. That's a great sin. That is a great sin of division. Yes, Isaac was old and blind ready to pass on his blessing god had told isaac and his wife 
Rebecca, that Jacob was to be the one who was to receive the blessing. The older son was to serve the younger. Hear that? In Genesis 25, verse 23, the book of the Lord says, And the Lord said unto her, Twain, two, two, two nations are in thy womb, and the two of the people shall be separated from thy bound, and the one people shall be stronger than the other. And the elder shall serve the younger. Uh, Isaac. Isaac was reluctant to obey God. In fact, he did not want to obey God by preferring. By, because he preferred Esau. When it came time to pass, amen, the blessing of God's promise on his son, Isaac planned to ignore God's will and to bless Esau. My brothers and sisters, don't, don't find yourself fighting against God. I haven't found anyone yet who's been able to box with God and win. So so don't don't be trying to fight against what God wants you to do. Isaac planned to ignore God's will and bless Esau. So he came up with a scheme. Amen. He came up with a scheme. And, and he said, my son, behold, he said, here am I, Esau said. And behold now, I am old. I know not the day of my death. Son, now, therefore, take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison, and make me sa savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me. That I may eat, that I may, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Rebecca overheard. Amen. Rebecca overheard Isaac's plan to ignore and bypass God's will. Therefore, she plotted with Jacob to deceive Isaac and say and have him pass the blessing uh, on Jacob. Remember, Isaac was blind and unable to see. Therefore, I, Jacob, was able to to deceive Isaac, receiving and blessing Isaac. Now look, listen. In the book of Genesis, the 22nd chapter, beginning at verse 20, 22, he says, and Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned, amen, him not. 
because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hand. So he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring me, bring it near to me, and I will eat uh, of my son's venison, that thy that my soul may bless thee. And he brought he brought it near to him, and he did eat me, and he brought him, him wings, wine, and he drank, and his father Isaac uh, said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came and came near and kissed him. And he smelled the, the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, smell of my son is of the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee. And, and nation bow down to thee. Be Lord over the heathen and let thy mother's sons bow down in thee. Curse the curse he, curse be everyone that curses you and blessed be he that bless you, my brothers and sisters. The plot of both the mother and the father was exposed. Here, both of them, both of them decided they're going to help God. They're going to help God. One by omission, the other by commission. My brothers and sisters, it's a it's a shame before God. God doesn't need any help. No matter what uh, Isaac had done, God would have provided. God would have provided. Well, but she just helped. Her. She just uh, uh, helped because she knew what God's plan was. But now listen, listen, listen. I want you to be clear with this. You don't need to come up with a scheme on how you go help God. Listen, people, God can do what God wants to do when he wants to do it at his own time. Isaac refused to reserve the blessing when the deception was discovered. In the final analysis, he repented. He turned away from his own desire and did God's will. Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, who, where he is, where is he? And had taken the venice and brought it to me. And I, I have eaten of all before can thou comest and have blessed him. My brothers and sisters, Isaac deceived, tried to deceive God. You can't do, you can't. When God has shared with you, this is what's going to happen, then your, your trust must believe that this is what God is going to do. Esau, I mean, uh, Isaac, he wanted Esau. Rebecca 
wanted Jacob. She remembered that it was God's will. Well, you say, well, she was only, she had heard God's will and, 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 and she was only trying to make come true what God had already said. Let me tell you something. There again, God don't need her help. God doesn't need her help. God knew. God knows how to have. You say, well, Isaac, he wasn't going to bless uh, uh, Jacob. He would have. He would have. Uh, how How would God have would? Well, that's between God. <laughs> Amen. That's between God and Esau. God and I and Isaac. God would have made Isaac do what he wanted him to do. If he had just had faith and not be partial. And therein lies. God does not want us to be partial with our children. Yes. We've got to learn. That Esau, Esau was going to be blessed, but he was not going to be the blessed child that God would use to bring the the uh, the Christ of Calvary through his through his gene. That deal was already determined while those two children were still in the mother's womb. Just understand that. God has a destiny for our children. And we must bless our children, all of them. And let God be the one who does what he wants them to do. What we ask our children, we need to ask them, do God's will. Don't try to outrun God. Where you're running to, he is already there. Don't try to hide from God. For in your hiding place, he's already there. You say, I'm going to get behind. I'm going to get behind the tree. God's behind the tree. He said, well, I'm going into a cave. God's in the cave. He said, well, I'll dig a hole and get in to the hole. God's into the hole. So where are you going to go? From the presence of God. When God has a plan for your life. Can't nobody stop you. You just start trusting God. You start trusting God instead of coming up with your own plan. God is the answer. You saw how Jacob, how he, uh, Isaac and Rebecca both sinned against God. Brothers and sisters, Trust God. Now, parents, listen to me. You can't expect God to allow you to go down the road that you want to go, and you have not brought your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You say, well, Brother Stevenson, I bring, I, 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 we study the Bible in the home. Well, let me tell you what. You have not taught your children to put God first in your life. You have not shown your children that worshiping God, and I know that there are people who say, well, you can worship God anywhere. But let me tell you something. On the Lord's day, the people of God are to come together in the place of worship and worship God together as the collective body of saints on the Lord's day. I know we are to, we are to worship and praise God every day. Let me tell you something, and you be clear with this. The Lord's day is the day of worship. When you neglect the day of worship. You are out of order with God. And I want you to understand. I can't excuse you. 
and don't be asking me to forgive you and excuse you because you don't feel good. You need to have the worship of God in your life on the Lord's day. That's what God will have you to do. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. Now, let's open up our prayers. Opportunity for those that need prayer. You, you may have gone down the wrong side of the fence with your children. God can heal it. God can make it. I'm not saying that everything is going to work out. It may not. But I tell you this. God will give you the direction on how to correct the problems that you have. If you'll listen this time. If you'll listen this time. God still, you you know, you'll still reap what you sow, but God will give you a way out. He'll never allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to bear. But with the temptation, he'll make a way of escape. So today, if you need prayer, you give us a call and let us pray with you and let us pray for you. That our God may strengthen your life and the life of those around you. God is able and he can do more than you can ask of him. Even, even more than you can I know that my Redeemer lives because he lives within my soul. I know that God is able. I want to give thanks this morning to those who supported the radio ministers this week. Sister Linda Berg, Sister Janiah Carter, Brother Alvester Curry, Brother Tony and Sister Chiquita Curry, Sister Jacqueline Hallman, Brother James Malone, Sister Honda Sharp, Sister Amanda Smith, Sister Felicia Stevenson, Brother Joe Stevenson, Sister Joey Stevenson, Brother Kevin Stevenson, uh, Sister Jaquay Thomas, uh, Sister Elaine Watts, uh, Sister Marilyn Wester, and our dear friend, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamishi, thank you. Thank you and thank you richly uh, for supporting the ministry. And we pray to God. And we pray to our God that you will, amen. Uh, Continue to be with us and support this ministry. Praise God. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Yes, this is Sister Mormon. Praise the Lord and thank you, Brother Kevin. How you doing? Oh, I am blessed and highly favored. And how is Sister Mormon this morning? I am blessed and highly favored. And just thanking God for what he has already done. Praise the Lord. For what he's doing right now. And for what he's going to do because I got his word and I got his promises. Praise the Lord. I can stand on his word, Pastor, when I can't stand on my feet. And that's good news. That is real good news. That's good news regardless of my circumstances. Amen, amen. Time, but I enjoyed that sermon. Thank and you. I like to have prayer for you and your wife and family, and for all the ones who prayed for this morning, and for all the morning meditation listeners, for the one that's not able to call in for one reason or another. Amen. For the opportunity to be able to call in for them. 
and you have a great day, and I love you. And you have a blessed, blessed day. <clears throat> uh, five and seven one twelve forty that our God may strengthen your life and mine. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall have rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Bow with me. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, <clears throat> once again we come to you and we thank you for those who supported this radio ministry. Facebook Live, our 24-hour radio station. Lord, what what a what a ministry you have placed upon us. And may you place it in the heart of others that they may give and, and, and Lord prosper them. Prosper others with the mindset to give. Lord, I pray, I pray for every soul that have listened and will listen uh, to this message today. Be with the parents of this generation. Lord, help them. Help us all, Father, that we might do your will with all of our children. Thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you, and I look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Until then, know this. Our God loves you, and so do I. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the Midwest Church.